Until now, scientists couldn't clearly explain how this amazing man managed to pierce himself through with many different types of cold weapons. Unlike other similar cases, when it came to tricks or quackery, he even willingly agreed to medical examinations and conducted his experiments under the supervision of various independent commissions. Unable to even explain this phenomenon, scientists chose to forget about it. Who was he really a skilled hoaxer or a unique person who managed to master the laws of the functioning of the body, which are still unknown to science? In May, in May 1947, a meeting of the commission was held in one of the medical centers in Zurich. It consisted of both professors and doctors on duty. Some students were also allowed to take part in the experiment. All members of the commission were skeptical about this. They expected to see another fakir or sword swallower who would try to deceive them with his tricks. When a nondescript, thin man of about 35 appeared in front of them, no one had any special illusions. And now the assistant even pierces him through with a rapier. Doctors gasp. They carefully examine the wound site, but there were no traces of blood. The director of the department, Professor Brunner, insists that an X-ray be taken. The radiologist is nervous, his fingers are shaking, but the picture turned out great. It shows that the rapier really pierced the body. Doctors are at a loss to guess how this is possible, but they warn the subject about the risk and insist that he stop these dangerous experiments. Some doctors are particularly shocked that the rapier was not treated with a disinfectant and was passed from hand to hand before the experiment began. Others are most afraid of the danger of damage to internal organs, but they were not able to convince the stubborn Dio. What is his secret? Literally in the Esperanto language Mirin Chado means miracle. This pseudonym was taken by the Dutchman Arnold Hanskies when he turned 33 years old. He came from a poor family. His father was a postman, his mother was the daughter of a priest. Before the German invasion of Holland, Arnold worked in Rotterdam as a graphic artist in an advertising agency. Later, supporters and followers of Chado will tell many different interesting stories about him, and the fact that even as a child Arnold realized his uniqueness, and the fact that from an early age he was able to describe people at a distance without seeing them. In addition, many attribute to him the gift of healing. We cannot verify these stories, but one thing is for sure Arnold engaged in an active spiritual search 30 years later. He quit his official job, moved from one city to another, and spent a lot of time in libraries. The meeting with the naturopath Hilke Otter turned out to be decisive for him, which helped him discover superpowers in himself. In January of the 46th year, Arnold first appeared in public under the name Mirin Chado. Jado himself assured that he did not need money or fame. His task was to convey the ideas of peace and brotherhood to people. The demonstration of the superpowers of the body for him is an attempt to prove the priority of the spiritual over the material. But those people who became Jado's companions were not so altruistic at all. They ruthlessly forced him to perform often it happened in small cafes, in front of a tipsy audience. Jado pierced himself dozens if not hundreds of times, and they demanded a new miracle from him. Hoses were inserted into the holes, and water poured over his body. The rapiers were smeared with poisons. The authorities often did not give permission for Shadow's performances. If he were an ordinary wizard, he wouldn't have such problems. But during his experiments, some viewers fainted, and the fact that a person inflicted such injuries on himself caused many horror and rejection. Since the path to major facilities in Europe was closed to Jado, he decided to go to America. To get permission to enter, he wrote a letter to Albert Einstein himself, because he was not just an authoritative scientist, but also a well-known fighter for peace. How did the great physicist respond to this letter? He did not believe the man, considering him an ordinary charlatan. He didn't bother to get to know him personally to test his abilities. This is a pity, because Einstein's testimony would be very valuable for posterity. One of the most common explanations for the phenomenon of Chado is that he made holes in the body fistulas, and for the assistant to insert rapiers into channels already prepared in advance. But this explanation cannot be considered completely satisfactory. With its help, it is impossible to understand how the assistant managed to bypass vital organs and avoid infection.
Jono himself explained his phenomenon by the fact that he performs such manipulations with the body only when he is in a special state of consciousness, which he achieves with the help of prolonged meditations. It is impossible to experiment endlessly on yourself. Every organism has its limits of strength. One day, Jono swallowed a large steel object that looked like a stiletto. He damaged his esophagus, and his health began to deteriorate. Two days later, he underwent surgery under anesthesia to remove a foreign object. After that, Jado's condition improved and he was discharged from the hospital, but ten days later he died while meditating. The official cause of death was called a rupture of the aorta. There is still a debate about who Jado was. His dangerous experiments with the body have puzzled both medical professionals and independent experts. It's a pity that he so thoughtlessly squandered his abilities and became a victim of his own experiment. His phenomena needed to be studied, not ruthlessly exploited.